PC Perspective's coverage of the 2013 Consumer Electronics Show is brought to you by AMD and the second generation A-Series APUs. Hey everybody, we're here at the ASUS suite at Trump Tower talking with JJ about some new component products, including PCI Express storage and a new graphics card. So uh, what can you tell us about the Raider Express? It's an entirely new, uh, actually, component segment for us. I mean, we've been in storage previously, actually, with uh, some USB 3 external and USB 2 external hard drives uh, that we've had predominantly for kind of our notebooks, as well as, of course, ODD, which we've had for years. Mm -hmm. um, but this is actually more kind of the classic storage that people think about when you think about either like SSDs or mechanical hard drives. But here we've decided to go with something that's very enthusiast-oriented, especially now that it's going to be under the ROG naming scheme, uh, with it being a Raider Express. So this is a PCI Express, a storage device. Um, we're not going into the specific yet as far as what's going to be the capacity, um, the controller, firmware, um, what type of utilities you might or might not have. But You're not going to tell me if it's Marvell or Sandforce or any of that yet. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you any of the really juicy stuff. All the users are going to have to stay locked to PC per. Uh, make sure to either you know check out your guys' news posts or uh, you listen to the podcast to find out the most current information, which will be coming soon. We're hoping. That's what I was going to say. Is, I mean, is this a, a late in the year thing or? Um, I would just say soon. Um, you know, hopefully uh, we'll have more information within the first part of this this half of this year. Um, definitely, probably even sooner than that. But just kind of just. Keep locked you know, for more information and more updates. What I can tell you, though, is that the product is very much finished uh, to a large degree. We've been working on this for over 10 months in terms of the validation, the compatibility, um, and the overall performance tuning. And that's really kind of the biggest thing that we're really focusing on. There has been historically other PCI Express storage devices in the past, right. but they kind of been mauled by a large amount of interoperability issues, whether it's like post problems, initialization with like RAID controllers, multi-GPU configurations, a lot of stuff like that. And we've done a huge amount of testing at this point to really ensure that, hey, when you drop it into Z77, X79, AM3+, it just works. Uh, that's so, the expectation. So in, in terms of what will make this different? Is it, is it, is it compatibility, verification, or are, we, are you going to do things like performance and other things like that too, to try to differentiate? I think it's actually a multi-pronged approach. So I think when you look at storage, first and foremost, the highest level of expectation from users is overall stability and compatibility. Mm -hmm. It's where you're running your operating system. It's where you're keeping you know, your important uh, saves for your games or family photos or whatever it might be, right? So that has to be first. Uh, second to that, we are definitely doing performance tuning to try to optimize and go with reduced latency. That's part of the reason why we picked also PCI Express. Sure. You have a lower latency interconnect to even give you better performance in that regard. Okay. Um, and then from there on the software side, we're definitely cooking up some stuff that hasn't uh, ever been seen in this standard kind of storage consideration space. So I think that on all three sides, you're going to see some really cool stuff from the Radio Express. Very cool. Now, what's, a, what's the second product we're going to show here? This uh, looks like something that we'll be pretty interested in. It says Ares 2 on the side. Yes. Uh, so for a lot of people know that CES time frame usually probably means the, <laughs> the beast of the beast that it is our flagship graphics cards. Right. Uh, and this one definitely is. But the first thing you're going to notice that's very different about this card is that it's not triple slot. Historically, our highest end cards have always been triple slot. Uh, this is actually only a two slot card. Um, and the main reason why is that, as you see, you've got a big old block here that's uh, right. in addition to it. It. So this is actually using a, a combination cooling system, and we actually have an 80 centimeter fan, which is helping to cool the PCB and the VRM assembly. And then we also have a double wide radiator, which is actually doing the primary cooling for the actual graphics card. So there's a fan on the on the GPU on the graphics card itself. Correct. Okay. And that's a downward firing fan. And is the card included as, or the cooler is part of the, of the solution. This is a complete uh, a housed unit. This is how it will be sold. It will come in a special, uh, as you've always seen, kind of commemorative collectors, uh, you know, product casing, which will be all self-contained. It'll be ready to go as far as the installation. Um, what and GPUs are inside? It's a kind of a, what you would expect. It's two full 7970 gigahertz edition cards. Um, we are using our same kind of cutting edge, in-house developed a VRM and PCB uh, componentry. And that's very important because with such high-end GPUs, the TDP requirements are very high. High, so the right. power target considerations could sometimes be affecting this type of uh, combined uh, performance levels. So we've actually, because of the DigiPlus power design and the SAP configuration that we have on here, we're not going to have some of the restrictions that similar products on the market have had. So not only are you going to be able to have great stock level performance, but there is still even additional room to actually push this even a little bit further. Right. So will this come overclocked? Is it modestly overclocked with a lot of room for the, the consumer to play around with that in stuff? In terms of the base clock frequencies, expect full reference 7970 gigahertz edition okay. frequencies. Okay. Um, and in terms of additional clock frequencies, uh, we 
we've uh, generally seen about, uh, I'd say about 100 to about 150 megahertz additionally, uh, with the memory having a little bit more variance. Okay. What can you tell us about pricing, availability, performance perhaps? Um, performance, you, you know, you should expect because we're essentially taking two full 7970 gigahertz edition cards that it's class leading. It's, it's the same level of performance you would have pretty much dropping in two cards. Um, so you might have, of course, a little bit of the latency introduction that you have when you have uh, two combined GPUs going through your PLXs. Right. Um, but you know, in our internal testing, it's been very, very comparable. Uh, it has been significantly faster than uh, even uh, the awesomeness that is the GTX 690 as well. So overall, that's great. Um, pricing and availability, that's going to be coming very shortly. Um, as far as availability, expected to be very limited as it always is. Uh, the card does have, just like we've historically always had, a limited edition number laser etched into it um, so can we get can we get number one number one uh, I don't know about number one but uh, definitely uh, you guys should make sure and, and check out PC per when this card hits because you'll probably be able to check it out there all right very cool thanks JJ